Well, it looks like we are pretty spoiled for Pokemon games this year. After Pokemon Legends Arceus' launch in January, we are officially entering the ninth generation of Pokemon on November the 18th with Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, which developer Game Freak promises will be an exciting evolution of the franchise. But what exactly does that mean? What should we be looking forward to? All right, well, let's break down everything we know about Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet so far. The first thing we need to know about these new games is that the series is going for a fully open world experience. Pokemon Legends Arceus kind of flirted with an open world structure earlier this year, of course, but it wasn't fully open world. It was a selection of biomes that you unlocked as you progressed through the story, and you couldn't seamlessly travel from one area to another without a loading screen. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, by contrast, promise a new style of adventure, with a world that you're free to explore at your leisure and not in an order dictated by the story. That sounds like the whole world will be available to explore from the off. Being strong enough to actually survive in certain areas is another matter entirely, of course. The main beats of the game will obviously still be all about your journey to hone your skills as a Pokemon trainer, but Game Freak promises that many more discoveries and stories will await you. You'll be meeting a variety of people and Pokemon, and adventuring in the world of Pokemon the way that you want to. That sounds like there may be lots of side content to uncover as well. And with the many different habitats shown off in the Scarlet and Violet trailers so far, we'll be able to see loads of Pokemon wandering out in the wilds, in deserts, forests, plains, seas, and more. What about the world that we'll be exploring? Well, much like previous Pokemon regions that were inspired by real-life locations, Galar by England, for example, the Kalos region by France, and Alola by Hawaii, it's thought that the lands of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are based on Mediterranean Spain. Now, although we don't know the name of the region yet, which may or may not give us a clue towards its inspiration, there are still plenty of little tales that point towards a Spanish flavor for Scarlet and Violet. First off, two of the starter Pokemon's names seem to include plays on Spanish words. Fuecoco could be a combination of Fuego, which is Spanish for fire, and Cocodrilo, Spanish for crocodile, while Sprigatito makes use of Gatito, the Spanish word for kitten. And as Twitter user Antonio D'Amico points out in a thread from earlier in the year, there are plenty more references in the very first Scarlet and Violet trailer, including a map of Spain itself. D'Amico also points out some references to arts, ceramics, and Spanish literature, but perhaps the most telling clues are in the architecture of the game, which takes inspiration from Spanish buildings and locations like La Sagrada Familia and Guel Park in Barcelona. I mean, we haven't seen much, of course, but we are really loving how the game looks so far. But it's not just the aesthetics that will set Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet apart. There are loads more new mechanics planned aside from the open world. Perhaps the most exciting of them all, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet will allow multiplayer co-op gameplay with up to four players. So along with the usual multiplayer mechanics you'd expect, like trading and battling Pokemon, you'll also be able to explore the various locations of the region in these games alongside other players. Though we don't know the specific details of the cooperative multiplayer just yet, like whether it'll be kept within certain areas of the game or whether you can trade and battle with your friends in person, this could potentially really shake up the Pokemon formula. Can you play the main storyline alongside a friend, for example? Can you travel to a friend's game and help them catch more powerful Pokemon to add to their collection and vice versa? Well, it seems we'll just have to wait to find out. What else can we expect from Scarlet and Violet? Well, you'll get a different starter outfit depending on which version of the game you've got. But that is not the only difference between the two versions. For the very first time in the series, one of two different professors coaches you through your game depending on which version you choose to play. In Pokemon Scarlet, you'll meet Professor Seda, and in Pokemon Violet, you meet Professor Turo. Each one is apparently carrying out research into certain lore passed down in the region, and both are absurdly attractive. Hey, I call them how I see them. Now, fans have noted some interesting juxtapositions between Seda and Turo, and also noticed a correlation between that and the legendary Pokémon each version of the game offers. 
Seda wears what looks like a fur two-piece, with arrowhead and beaded accessories that definitely give off a prehistoric vibe. Turo, on the other hand, is wearing a neon glowing jumpsuit. Very futuristic. And interestingly, many of Seda's names in different language localizations of the game are derived from or translate to the past, while Turo's translate to, you guessed it, the future. This marks the first time, by the way, the professors from the core Pokemon series do not have names that reference the natural world. But their past and future names tie directly to the legendary Pokemon for each game. Koraidon, the legendary Pokemon for Scarlet, seems to come from the Japanese word Korai, meaning ancient, and they have a more classic dragon-type design based on lizards or maybe even dinosaurs. Miraidon, meanwhile, the legendary for Violet, is possibly derived from the Japanese word Mirai for future and has an almost robotic design, looking kind of like a cross between a dragon and a jet engine. There are loads of theories as to what these past and present themes could mean. Are the two different versions set in two different time periods? Are professors Seda and Turo actually the bad guys, obsessed with finding out more about their opposing legendary, depending on your version of the game? I mean, there's no way to know yet, but it's all very, very intriguing. The only other character in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet that we know anything about is Nimona. She's your friend from the beginning of the game, has a sunny and energetic disposition, and of course, she absolutely loves Pokemon battles. The official Pokemon site says that she's an experienced Pokemon trainer with undisputed skill in battle, and will serve as a reliable guide for you on your adventures. Though, apparently, it seems that she's not the best at throwing Pokeballs. Nimona seemingly has three Pokemon that we know of. The first is Palmy, an electric mouse Pokemon. Those really seem like a must-have for any new version of the game nowadays. Do not be fooled by its cuteness, though. Alongside electric sacs in its cheeks, Palmy has electricity-discharging organs on its forepaws and generates electricity by rubbing its cheeks shocking its opponents by touching them with the pads on its paws. Nimona also has Smoliv, the normal slash grass olive Pokemon. The oil that comes out of Smoliv's head has a very strong bitter taste and is apparently not suitable for consumption. But I mean, that sounds more like a challenge than anything. When startled or attacked, Smoliv will shoot this oil out, slowing its opponents down. It'll then seize that moment to run away. In the fruit on its head, Smoliv stores oil made from nutrients it gathers through photosynthesis. As a result, it can go for a week without eating or drinking. Smoliv prefers dry and sunny climates and seems to spend its days sunbathing, which makes it seem like the perfect Pokemon for warm Mediterranean vibes, don't you think? Finally, Nimona has also made most of the internet extremely jealous by owning Lechonk, a Pokemon that immediately captured hearts upon its first appearance. Lechonk, the normal type hog Pokemon, aside from being a perfect round boy, uses its sense of smell to find and eat only the most fragrant wild grasses and the richest berries. As a result of its fine dining habits, it has come to radiate an aroma resembling herbs that apparently bug Pokemon do not like. If attacked by its opponent and startled, Lechonk charges forward in a panic. And though they may appear fat at first glance, Lechonk's body is mostly muscle, built by constantly walking around in search of food. Timid and faint-hearted, but also, oh my god, so strong. I mean, who cannot relate to Lechonk? Finally, we mentioned them briefly before, but let's run through the three starters you'll be choosing in Scarlet and Violet. First up is Sprigatito, the grass cat Pokemon, who loves attention so much that they'll sulk if they see their trainer give it to anyone else. When Sprigatito kneads and rubs with its forepaws, a sweet aroma is released that can mesmerize those around it. This aroma has therapeutic qualities and makes opponents lose their will to battle. Aside from it being utterly adorable, Sprigatito can also photosynthesize through its fur. I love the look of this one, but my one hope for Sprigatito personally is that it doesn't become bipedal in its evolutions. Next up, we have Fue Coco, the fire crocodile Pokemon, who is laid back and just likes to do things at its own pace. It loves to eat, and it will sprint towards any food it finds with a glint in its eye. I love them already. Flickering atop Fue Coco's head is fire energy that is leaking out from inside the Pokemon's body, so when Fue Coco gets excited, 
Its head sprites more flames. Oh my. Finally, there's Quaxley, the duckling Pokemon, who is quite serious mannered compared to the other two starters, apparently. Quaxley is tidy and dislikes getting its head dirty. Its body is always glossy because the gel secreted by its feathers repels water and grime. The gorgeous quaff on its head is slicked back using a rich, moist cream, and it attacks by kicking its opponents swiftly and repeatedly. Sounds like quite the gentleman. I mean, personally, while I'm very tempted by Sprigatito because, well, cats, I am a fire trainer at heart, so I think I will have to go for Fue Coco. But what starter do you have your eye on? Anyway, that pretty much sums up everything we know about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet so far. Granted, it's not that much, but it is enough to see people let their imaginations run wild and lots of fan theories start to pop up. Have you seen any that you'd be happy to be proven true? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. We will be following Pokemon Scarlet and Violet closely in the lead up to launch, so make sure to keep checking back for more info. Oh, and we are totally Team Seda, by the way. Thanks for watching. Bye!